blue skies. Okay, when you live in LA, people love to say the great thing about living in LA is you can surf and ski on the same day. Well, how about ski and poker on the same day? So I skied this morning and then we jumped in the truck and raced over to the desert of Palm Springs, do a little pokering this afternoon. You didn't go skiing this morning. Yesterday. It was yesterday, but it's, you know, yesterday. it's gonna, I'm gonna get this, cut all this together. Let's go. Yeah. We're hiking in Josh, we call this hiking? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. We're walking, hiking in Joshua Tree. I hear there's a poker game at the end of the trail. <laughs> there's big plans to play poker tonight. Walking with my great friend, Lex Medlin. We've been friends forever, 35 years. Lex played in our Monday night home game weekly for over 20, 25, 30 years, yep. something like that. Yep, you taught me how to play. Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm not very good. I'm, uh, look who talked to you. <laughs> okay, we saw a sign that said $2 draft beer and $5 blackjack at a place called the Tortoise Rock Casino as we're coming out of the Joshua Tree National Park where we did our little walk, hike thing. We are gonna check this place out. Well, the $2 beer cost me $100 playing blackjack. Can't see. We gotta make it to the Agua Caliente and play some poker. Okay, finally, time for some poker. Now, putting together these vlogs, these series of vlogs so far, has really caused me to look deeper into my game, challenging myself to become a better player, plug some leaks, find ways to improve. With that in mind, I gave myself a little challenge for this session to raise or fold pre-flop. I would never be the first limper into a pot pre-flop. I'm always going to come in for a raise, but we all find ourselves in situations where someone has raised and we don't three bet and we call, putting ourselves quite often in a very awkward position because the strength of our hand or the strength of our position isn't quite good enough for that three bet. We decide to just call and take a look at that flop, usually leading to us folding after the flop and losing a bet. One of the things I know about myself and my game is I'm not a big bluffer. I like to maximize my wins, minimize my losses, and that's where I find my comfort zone, my profit zone. So I sit down to play with these couple of things in mind. One, I'm gonna play razor fold pre-flop. And secondly, I'm looking for situations where I can be aggressive and take down some pots. I sit down to play, I've got my chips, I haven't even settled in yet, and I pick up eight six of diamonds in middle position. We have a couple of limpers, I make it $15, no one calls, pick up the blinds. The very next hand, I pick up two beautiful kings. Player on my right opens for $20. I have played against this player many, many times, even though I only play at Agua Caliente maybe once a month, four hours a, four hours a month even. I have seen this player and I know her tendencies. She is super tight and super straightforward. She only raises with premium hands. And not only that, she often will fold a premium hand if she faces aggression. So she makes it $20, what do I do? There's no way I can just call the $20 bet and give everybody the right price to call. I have to raise. I'm tempted to just min click, make it $40, hopefully that clears out the field and she calls, we have a nice heads up pot. Seems like not quite enough, so I make it 50, it folds around to her, she thinks about it, she thinks about it, she turns over two queens and she mucks. Did I make a mistake? I mean. I don't think so. I don't think I was ever gonna get her to commit any more money. And if I just call, that's a mistake. So I did the best I could. I made it 50, she still folded. I take down that pot. The very next hand, my third hand after sitting down, I pick up ace eight of diamonds. This time I make it 12 and get three callers. Finally, a little bit of a pot. Flop comes ace four, four. I lead out for 20, everyone folds. I win my first three hands. At this point, you're thinking, well, I've won my first three hands. It's going to be a great session. Smooth, sailing, nothing but nothing but winners from this. Nope, that's, that's not what happened. Nope. In fact, what happens is I fold the next 35 hands. Over an hour and a half, almost two hours, I do not play a single hand. Remember, I've challenged myself to play razor fold, but mainly I get no card. Just a series of 10, deuce, 7, 3, crap. In fact, you know... You're running really bad when you finally look down at pocket eights and go, whoa, a premium. So I have pocket eights. I raise because I'm playing raise or fold. 
I get two callers. The flop is ace, king, nine, and the gentleman leads out. And this gentleman has been leading out on every flop where he has at least a pair. He has never once let out as a semi-bluff. He feels like if he gets a pair, he should lead out. He does it. I fold. The other player folds. He shows us his ace, seven. So he flopped top pair. He takes down that pot. I've got queen jack here in the cutoff. There are two limpers. When it gets to me, I make it 15. Button gets out of the way. One of the blinds calls. One of the limpers calls. Three of us see a flop of king, queen, five. It is checked to me, and I decide to bet $30 with my second pair medium kicker. Pick up one collar. We go to a turn, which is the three. He checks it to me again. I don't think this player is going to check top pair twice. He might, but I doubt it. I really feel like he's got some sort of a draw and he wants to get to the river. I decide to slow down, check the turn, and we go to the river. The river's a three, pairing the board, and now he leads out for $75. What do you do? This feels like a very polarizing bet. I don't think he's ever leading out for $75 with just one king. I really think he's got a missed straight draw, some sort of 10 jack, ace 10, ace jack hand. So I kind of go into the tank and I just don't think he plays a king this way, which means he's got a busted straight draw or he flopped some sort of monster. So I call the 75, he turns over pocket fives. He in fact does have a monster. There is a monster in my closet. There was a monster under my bed. He flopped a set, he slow played it. He made the big bet on the river. He got max value from me. Well done, sir. Good hand. Which brings us to the hand of the day. I had to reload after that queen jack debacle. I find myself with ace king in the small blind. A late position player has opened for 15, but I'm playing razor fold. So I make it 35. Big blind calls, late position calls. Three of us see a flop, $100 in the pot. Flop comes jack, jack seven, and I lead out for $30 into a $100 pot. Player on my left in the big blind thinks about it eventually calls, late position folds. Two of us go to a turn. Turn is the five. Now we've got jack, jack, seven, five out there. And this is where I start to make some mistakes. With around 150, 160 in the pot, I've got about 175 behind and I bet $75. Yeah, I'm rather disgusted as well. Well, he goes really into the tank here at this point. So we pretty much know what he's got at this point. He doesn't have a jack, but he's got a pair and he doesn't want to let it go really thinks about it he really thinks about it he really thinks about it and he calls river brings a three doesn't really change anything there's a weird miracle straights but i'm sure he doesn't have that i'm sure he has some sort of pocket pair i look down i've got about a hundred dollars left and there's about a three hundred dollar pot and i go all in he thinks about it but truthfully he doesn't think that long before calling and turning over pocket twos i say nice hand good call and toss my ace king into the muck where it belongs so really thinking about this hand and analyzing this hand for this vlog has illuminated, really, the mistakes that I've made. I don't hate my play pre-flop. I make a nice three bet. That's solid. I don't hate my bet on the flop. But what I really hate is my play on the turn. So here I am with 175 behind me and 160 in the pot. And if I'm willing to risk all of that, then why don't I shove it all on the turn and really make it tough on him? I never made it tough on him. In fact, I did the opposite. I kept setting him a great price. I, I made a small bet on the flop, give him a great price to call. I made a small bet on the turn, give him a great price to call. I made a small bet on the river. It's impossible for him to fold on the river. He can't fold on the river, $100 into a $300 pot. He's got a pair. Of course, a great move would be shoving on the turn, shoving into 175 into a $160 pot, doing an overbet on the pot, really making him dig deep for that call. I never made him dig deep. I just made it easy on him. Okay, so with poker out of the way, I wander over to the cigar bar to meet Lex, and he is playing video poker. So here is me uh, drawing to a bunch of uh, four of a kinds that I don't get, and here's me with four to a royal. Is it over here? Is it over? It's, it's either here or here. Here's me with four to a royal. Trip. The poker was great. I'm challenging myself to become a better player, to get better, to study more, to plug up my leagues, to really analyze everything that I'm doing and to make myself a better player. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing and for making a comment. It's, it, I really appreciate it. And that's it. I'm gonna have my good friend here, Lex, take us out. All right, we're back in LA, we made it. This is Lex, how'd you do on gambling? I'm up. I know, you won a bunch of money, I lost a, a bunch of money. Of, yeah, but I took all yours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you totally lost. All right, thanks. Yeah. Did you have fun? Time of my life, can't wait to go back.